and it's been a busy week. I'll be honest with you. It's been a really, really busy week. Uh, ben turned 13. He had his first concerts at St. Thomas. Um, had parties last weekend, parties this weekend. Um, lots to do. Uh, lots happening at, uh, at Annie's school where I'm volunteering for their school shows as well. Um, lots happening for me personally with uh, papers and trying to, uh, if you haven't already heard my boring story, I'm trying to finish this crazy master's degree that I've been working on for I don't know how many years, um, but it means that there's a lot of work um, and a lot of hours being spent on that. Um, and so in the back of my head, I was like, well, if Lauren's not there, I could, I could do this. But I never really spent that time really fleshing it out. So here's the danger is that it's going to be lame. But I hope it's not. Um, <laughs> so I'm just giving you that disclaimer. Um, and what I'll try to do is if I notice that it's being lame, I'll just try to just, just end and just <laughs> gracefully walk away. That'll be the plan. That, that's, that's, that'll be the plan. Um, 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 Richard said before quite spontaneously about um, um, maybe Advent being, you know, this 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 um, time where it's like kind of tidying your house, um, and that sense of preparation, and certainly within all the music you know, that I'm choosing, and when I'm thinking about um, the songs to sing during Advent time, I al I always find it quite um, challenging to pick the songs for the the weeks of Advent leading up to Christmas, because you don't want to do Joy to the World right away, because we're not there yet. Um, but there are not that many songs that are about the preparation and that still kind of give us that feeling of entering into the holiday spirit without quite diving all the... Do you know what I mean? Like, there's all these tensions that are there when I'm choosing all those songs. And, and, um, and in some ways, it's, 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 a, it's a tension that could reflect um, how I feel. I always, without wanting to be self-centered, I always feel best if I just talk about myself when I'm here because I have not authority to talk about anyone else or to generalize. Um, but um, I, f I feel like it reflects the tensions of the Advent season, these weeks that lead up to Christmas where there's so many tensions that pull and, and, and you can't just relax into the holiday because there is so much, so much always, no matter what we do, there's always so much. And I think that that I could probably generalize to everybody. Um, so much to do in the weeks leading up to the holiday that um, and a lot of it does have to do with preparation for the holiday. Some of it doesn't. Some of it's just the craziness of life that seems to all happen at this time of year. Um, this, at this December and June, you know, like that's just, it's the craziness. Um, and so what does it mean to, to really prepare? And so Richard saying before about, you know, maybe it's about kind of like tidying up your house for guests to come. And I thought, oh my God, if that's what it's about, like I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I know it's not what you meant, but if, when you said that, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> um, because, uh, and I mean, you know, I say that, and, and as I say, I've had these pe you know, people over for Ben's birthday this weekend and last weekend, and, and I did clean up. I, um, I am able to clean up. Um, my, my bar for what cleaning up looks like is maybe not at the same level as perhaps my grandmother's um, um, traditionally has been over the years. <laughs> Definitely is not at the level where Gales is at. Definitely is not. <laughs> definitely is not at the level where Louisa's is at when her sons aren't home. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Key point right there. Um, but I do. I, I can tidy. Um, but um, I can tidy and I can make it look good. Um, but as Jackie would know, who has helped me in the past um, with tidying, uh, don't go in the laundry room. Uh, there are some cupboards you are just not allowed to open. Uh, definitely don't step foot in the basement <laughs> and in the, in the garage only at your own risk. So, so there's, there's tidying, there's, there's things that can often even look like tidying and, and they're real, they're well-intentioned. You want, you want people to walk in and not feel like just, um, you, you, get, you get a feeling, you get an itchy feeling, right? When your house is messy or, or whatever and, and, and that's, that, that's, that's real. And so you want people to walk into your house and feel like they can, they can relax and be at ease and part of that is tidying up, um, but as long as you don't look too closely, and it, sometimes. And it made me think of around this time last year, actually, um, when I was uh, doing all the, or, or ma project managing all the renovations at the house for the elevator and the bathroom and the bedroom and the, and the garage ramp and the family room and like just everything. And um, I really wanted, 
I really wanted Lauren's room to be ready by Christmas. He had, he, he had been sort of marooned downstairs since the, the previous August and, um, and quite understandably was not happy about that um, and had hoped to be back um, upstairs or you know with the option of going upstairs by Halloween and, and I just knew that would never happen and so in my head I was like okay but we could do it for Christmas and so um, I was at Rona buying paint because um, because some very kind moms at the gate, there's a moms at the gate community at schools where you drop off and pick up, um, who I uh, talked to one of them one day and was just saying how, you know, I'd hoped to get this room done, but I didn't know if I'd be able to. And, and they, then she just went away and she organized her and two others and they were just like, we're coming, just tell us what day and we're going to paint the room. We're just going to get it done. Um, and they did, which was amazing. So I was at Rona about this time, as I say, last year and getting paint um, for that room. And there was another lady there and she was also looking for paint. And I heard her kind of talking with the guy, you know, who was, because I was next in line, I was waiting, um, as you do at well, Rona. Um, <clears throat> and she was kind of explaining what she was doing. And in the process of explaining what she wanted and what she was doing, she was like, yeah, you know, I have, I have all these people coming over. And, you know, I could see there's like the scuff marks on the walls and there's the, you know, the, the little nicks here and there. And I just really wanted to look good for them coming over. And I was like, oh, my God, thank God you're not coming to my house. Because, <laughs> because if we're talking about the level of tidiness and preparation that involves no nicks in the walls and no marks and no dirt on the baseboards, and then, then, then really it's over between us before it even starts. Um, and so all of that kind of together makes me wonder... Um, as I say, in a very uh, unprepared way, but which is ironic in its own way, um, uh, makes me wonder what kind of preparation, what does preparation for, for, for God s stepping in for, 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 you know, that first verse of resting place that says, you know, who, who will build me a home? Um, and in Advent, we're talking about preparation and for Emmanuel, which is God with us and, you know, the, the celebrating that incarnation and him coming to earth and 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 what does it what does it mean to be prepared for that what does it mean does it mean does it mean having a clean house does it mean having the kind of clean house that I had for people coming over for Ben's birthday where it's kind of I, I did I did a lot of work uh, but don't go in the laundry room um, um, or you'll see you'll, you'll kind of see the real deal um, does it mean does it mean the kind of preparation that is trying to get a room done so that so that someone can have a place that they you know haven't had doesn't mean like the woman at Rona who's going to make all of her walls look beautiful before her in-laws come over and what does that say is that about preparation for is that preparation for people coming and welcoming people in your home or does that say more about 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 how she wants to present herself so so what does preparation for us mean and um, definitely, I, definitely, I don't have answers, but I, I really, really wonder. And there are, there are many people and, that have said to me and to Lauren over the years that they feel very welcome when they come to our house. Um, if you have come to my house and you haven't felt that way, I'm sorry, you can talk to me later and I'd love to work <laughs> on that. Um, but, but enough people have said it to me that I have to believe that for some, um, it is a welcoming place. And I wonder... I wonder what makes it welcoming, um, because it's not it's not it's not the lack of scratches and, and nicks in the wall. <laughs> it's 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 not the the cleanliness and the tidiness of of every room. It's not the ability to roam free and not see my dirty underwear metaphorically. Um, so so what is it that makes a welcome? And I hope what 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 is reflected in people saying that they feel welcome in our home when they do. Again, I don't want to assume everybody does, but there are people who do, so I'm talking just about them at least. Um, what, what is it reflecting? Um, so I can only, only guess because I haven't actually asked them, which would be a nice thing to do, actually, maybe, a, or a useful thing to do. But I can only guess that, 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 it, that it has to do with the feeling, that it has to do with the people who are there who hopefully um, um, reflect what is genuinely a feeling of, of gladness to have people, to have people there. Um, it's probably reflected in food, um, because uh, let's just face it, a lot of hospitality and a lot, pardon? And wine. and wine, thank you. Yes, Jackie, as someone who has come over very often, um, could be reflected also in wine. Um, but hey, hey, the Last Supper was bread and wine, so I feel like there's, there's, a, there's not a bad image there. 
but food really does often have a have a uh, a real part to play in the feeling of welcome and when you're building connection um, with people. In, in fact, um, one of the things I'm talking about in one of these never-ending papers that I'm writing is about the holidays in the school and how it can be difficult um, to manage the expectation of schools and communities that there be uh, shows at holiday time, but the equally um, strong um, expectation, especially in some areas, some areas less so, where it's more um, homogenous, but um, the expectation that 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 either the right holiday will be highlighted or that no holiday will be highlighted. And, and that's a very difficult thing to do. I felt that much more um, when I was at uh, Beechwood um, uh, last year and, and, and a few years before that, uh, where there is a, a, a very large Jewish community, there's also a Christian community, there's also a Muslim community, um, there's also a there's a there's also a small, very small, but but there's there's a, a Jehovah Witness family in there, which is 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 is, is another thing to, to juggle with, um, and and so what do you do? And one of my solutions um, over the years has been to draw out the things that are common to all of our celebrations which is not to take away from the uniqueness of each celebration, but to say in our human experience, when we want to celebrate and we want to come together and, and, and be with each other and welcome people into our homes, there are things that are common. Um, and one of those things is food. It, it, it really is. And you start asking kids, well, what do you eat special at the holidays? And they always have, they always have things that, that, except for the Jehovah Witnesses, I still struggle with that, but um, the, just being honest. Um, but they always have that. They always have, there's always food. There's almost always music um, involved in some way. Um, and, and, and mostly it's about getting together with family and friends and having that welcome in each other's homes. Um, and so, so hopefully people feel that when they come to our house, that, they're, that they're, they're the people who live there are glad to see them, and that even if the walls are full of nicks, um, there's, there's going to be there's going to be food that, that can be served um, and and prepared or tea made um, of all types, right? Or wine served. Um, and there's something really symbolic about that. So how does that translate into our preparation and our welcome for Jesus and for God? Um, because they're not going to walk in, literally, and have a cup of tea. Um, they're, not li they're not literally going to walk in and you take their coat off and, and put it. And all those symbols that we associate with welcoming and with having people in our homes and making them feel, feel, feel good and feel connected with us, those, those, those tangible things aren't there. So, so what's, what's, what's left or what is there to develop? Um, it's, it's why I, I did this little um, Advent project with the kids the way that I did it. Um, I explained it last week, so I'm sorry if it's repetitive, but some people I know weren't here um, last week in a very small little period of time, and hopefully I got the message across clearly enough because um, it's hard to develop um, in 10 minutes, but um, I gave the kids a calendar of December and suggested that they do a bit of an Advent calendar process. Uh, where they could um, do kind things of any variety, and we, we brainstormed a whole bunch of options, big and small. Um, and when they did a kind thing, um, either if their parents were there, great, they witnessed it, they'll give them a kindness sticker, a star, or if they did it and their parents weren't there, then they go and they can explain the story and what made it kind, and they can get their sticker for that. And the objective being, apart from, of course, doing lots of kind things and being conscious of kindness, um, would be to take all those kindness stars and translate them into, like, um, kindness dollars that they can exchange for gifts uh, next week. Um, so if you haven't brought in some white elephant items and you'd like to, please feel free. Um, gifts, they can exchange those kindness dollars for gifts that they can then give to their family and friends as, as presents at Christmas time. So not for themselves, but for others. And I told them, I kind of linked it for them with the story of the wise men and how they came, you know, the story of them coming to Bethlehem, whether it, you know, it didn't happen the night he was born, it actually probably happened two or three years later, but that's okay. Um, the idea of the wise men coming and, and, and seeking Jesus out um, and being prepared with gifts to give him. Um, and I talked about how, how do you find a place that you don't, that, you, that you've never been to? Uh, well, you get a map. 
And well, but what if you don't know exactly even where you're going? Well, you, you approximate and you, you get closer and then you figure out where you are. And, and, and so what kind of maps do your parents use when they want to go somewhere? And it's like, well, now we all use Waze or we use Google Maps or we use on our GPS on our phones. And, and so it was quite obvious to them that the wise men did not have GPS. Um, and so what did they use? Well, they used the stars. And so that's why the stickers are stars. See? connections. Um, so they used the stars. They followed the stars and it's not as precise as a GPS but it, but it, it got them there um, and, they, and they followed that map um, of the stars to get to where Jesus was and they, and they brought their gifts with, with, with them for him. And so what does that mean for us today? How can we be like that with the wise men? How can we, how, what map are we following and where are we actually even trying to get to? And I suggested that Jesus coming um, and, and living the life that he led on earth um, was a way for him to give us a map for our hearts, a map for our hearts to travel and to follow, like the wise men followed the stars, um, to, to, get to, um, to get to him and, and to get to a place where our hearts were, were, were formed and, and healthy and, and reflective of all the love and kindness that God is always wanting us to strive for. Um, and I was hoping that for the kids it would make a connection that that's what preparation is for, for God um, and, and Jesus coming, and, and that's what Christmas is supposed to be. And I don't know, again, it's that tangible, well, here's your sticker for being nice to somebody, and, and, and that, works, that works really well for the kids, it, and they get it. And Annie was really quite motivated. Ben's getting a little bit beyond, but um, he took himself out a little post. He, was, he didn't take a calendar. He was too cool. But he put a, par la suite, he put a little post-it note on the fridge, and he was drawing his stars on there every time. He felt like he had done something nice. So he, 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 got, he got into it um, a little bit as time went on. Um, but, but how do we prepare our hearts? How do we, how do we find maps to follow that um, help our hearts to be kinder, help our hearts to be more loving, which ultimately I think is how you prepare, not by painting or by cleaning up your kitchen, which I know is not what you literally meant, um, even though sometimes those things are a part of how you welcome people into your home, um, that the real welcome is, is, is how you prepare your heart. Um, at the risk of not stopping where I should, um, because that might have made a nice little ending. Um, I'll just add that I've been reading a book, um, uh, since I didn't prepare, I don't remember her name. Toni Bernard, that's her name. Um, and she uh, wrote this book because she uh, got sick. She was a law professor, and she, I'm not finished it yet, but she, she was a law professor. She went on a trip and blah, blah, blah. She got sick, and if you watch TED Talks, there was a big one recently by a girl named Jennifer something, and she talked about the same disease. It was, it's like a viral disease that just hits you, and, and sometimes it's labeled as chronic fatigue syndrome, but it's, it's, it, it, does, it does it way short shrift. Um, to what it does to, to people. And anyway, so she got this, this disease that basically had her bedridden and had her, um, there's a whole story there. Uh, she, she was a um, practitioner of Buddhist practice. I feel like you don't, you're not a worshiper when you're a Buddhist. I don't know what word to use because um, there, isn't, there isn't a God to worship. But she was involved with Buddhist practice. That seems like a good way to say it. Um, and one of the things she talks about is metta, which is the loving, a loving kindness practice. And I've only just started to read about that. Um, um, so I don't, I don't, I don't, so, so maybe stay tuned. Maybe I'll have that plan for next time. Um, but there's a whole, a whole, a whole process and, and there's nothing new about it, right? Because we're, it's, it's a human experience and it, there's so much that's common, common to all of us and to all of what we, what we know the bottom line is in terms of what we want to do and how we want to be and how, how we should be with each other in the world. Um, but, but it just puts it in a really neat perspective. Um, and the thing that I, that I noticed uh, particularly so far um, as I'm reading about it is that this practice, this loving kindness practice starts with a meditation that's self-centered. It's, it's, it, 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 it's about um, showing yourself love and respect. And I find that hard to start. I find it hard to start there. And I don't know if I find it hard to start there because I'm self-righteous and I, and, I, and, I, and I don't want to be self-centered and or if I find it hard to start there because it's just something that's hard to do. Um, and maybe, maybe there is a danger of ending up self-centered and navel-gazing um, to start in a place where you um, uh, think about and work through the idea of being loving and kind toward yourself. The pitfall, maybe it's there, 
but maybe that doesn't make it the wrong thing to do. Um, and all these things are, you know, we talk about them chronologically or consecutively because we have to talk in that way. We live time chronologically and consecutively, um, but all these things really, they happen all kind of simultaneously, right, in the circles that all move in, in and out with each other. Um, but I just thought I would leave you, leave you with that idea um, of, of, of loving kindness um, being how we prepare our hearts. It, it seems so simple, um, and if I... It, it seems so simple, but it's not. Um, it's easy to bring food into the to the food baskets at school, and it's easy to bring you know um, toys to to the bin at the hospital. And these are nice, and these are good things to do. But what's a lot harder is to, in each moment of each interaction every day, whether you're at home or at work or at school, um, to to live out those loving kindness acts that you know that we're trying to encourage the kids to do with their stars. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. And there are a lot more scratches and nicks and laundry rooms that we wouldn't want anyone to go into in our hearts, um, at least for me, um, than I would care to admit. Um, but working on that and trying to develop that, um, but still knowing, thank God, still knowing that people are welcome, feel welcome when they come to my house. My laundry room really is poop hole. I wouldn't have said poop if I was not on tape. Um, it really is a poop hole. Um, they're really, my walls really are a mess. Um, there are plenty of cupboards that you don't want to open because stuff really, really might fall on your head. Um, so they're, they're, it, it's not cleaned up. It's not prepared the way I would like it to be prepared. And yet, people feel welcome. So I suppose there is no chronological answer. It's holding all those things, like I said before, at the same time, and knowing that we're meant to work on that, and cleaning our laundry rooms in our hearts, um, and, and cleaning the nicks off the walls, and, but that we can nonetheless prepare a welcoming place for people and for God. Mm. Amen. Amen.